Well, Kate, you don't know. I'm having a rest for a few weeks and I'm oh, letting, starting. I'm letting I say, in case you don't know, I'm having a rest for a few weeks and letting Kat take over to give the spiel and the talk and see how it goes. That's it? What? <laughs> the cat or cat? <laughs> I thought he's going to say a couple of words more. Yeah. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, he's having a rest, but he's, uh, he's looking after himself. He's, uh, he's burning a lot of energy on exercising, getting fit. So he's having a rest from speaking uh, to the group, but he's still not having a rest, and he's doing very well on speaking one-on-one. -on -one. There are still people calling on the phone and on Skype and having him on private, which is, uh, yeah, it's easier, Terry can say, how much easier it is to actually, you know, like adjust the language to the to meet the person where, where they are, rather than just drop random ideas at everyone. So he reserved that uh, good part for himself, still available, for a ridiculously low donation if anybody wants to pay it, because I remember I used to go to a psychotherapist before I got my one-on-one -on -one of Bob, with Bob. A psychotherapist was charging like 180 per hour. Mm. And of course you have to go there forever. You were, oh well, I was working at sea, I had money. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Bob takes one third of this money if someone is willing to pay because often people don't have any and he's still not going to throw them out of the door. And there are people who actually need, the, depends on the ripeness. And this is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling it to you also because when, when you find yourself at that point where nothing else matters, doesn't matter my relationships with my family, doesn't matter my job, my career. Now I really, I really have the priority. I want to see through this illusion of me. I don't want to take things personally anymore. This is important. Everything else is not. This is the, this is the point where, the, you know, the, speaking to Bob is just a delight for both. For the one who is asking questions and for the one who is answering. Because it, that level of commitment which Nisargadatta calls earnestness, is, uh, it, it means there is just really, really very, very thin veil between the, the reality and, well, the filtering through the eye. Th it may be very desperate, it may be very painful, it may, it may feel very solid, but if that earnestness or commitment is there, that wall can be penetrated one pointer. That's the ripeness, that's the... That's the place where this fruit is so heavy and so juicy and so rich that the one touch can, can push it off the tree. But what is actually standing in the way usually is that moment to moment we give importance to, to many other things. And that's natural also. It's just when that importance is, uh, is recognized it usually drops away. Like I can say, oh my gosh, it's so important that I'll be at work on time because there is someone there who really desperately needs me and they will be waiting, they'll be worried. It's so important. Yes, yeah, sure. But then I understand that this importance and this idea of importance in the relative, in the dream, is just part of the dream. And I'm still going to be driving fast. But I will know that whatever the feelings or commentary or thoughts are going on, they're just the dream. And, and that's the freedom. Because now there is nobody to take on board any consequences that are completely out of my hands. So now, even though the situations like the uh, importance coming up, you know, it's important that I don't forget to give Bob the, the tablet. They are, you know, they... they dealing with the neurotransmitters in the brain. You can't forget that. It's just dangerous. I know, it's just, uh, yeah, something's wrong with the internet. Nothing we can do about it. It's not transmitting, it just stopped. Yes, yeah, so, so this, this relatively important things, they come in life and that's fine. It's just when we recognize, oh yeah, it's relatively important. Yeah, sure, in this moment, in the dream. But what really matters you know, if I have the commitment, what really matters is to see the truth. So that dream is giving me some juicy story that I have to rush, or I have to be careful, I have to watch out, I have to not forget, pay the bills, whatever. It's a beautiful, juicy story. It's the way the, the non-dual one is expressing. But what's really important 
is to see it for what it is, the story. Because if I see the story, no matter how beautiful, how important, how stressful, how dreadful, for what it is, just the story, I'm free. And, uh, and the story doesn't touch me. It, it doesn't mean that, yeah, I was, I was telling you just before the meeting, it doesn't mean that there won't be, you know, if, if there is a pain, there will be tears. If there is an emotional pain or heartbreak, also there will be sadness. But that sadness is actually, there is a sweetness in it. There is a sweetness. I remember the, recently I've lost a friend who just moved on. And I used to be so attached to her, we would spend an hour a day on the phone. Just so much love invested, so much um, attention invested. And then she just moved on because that's what she does. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. And then, of course, there was a sense of void, almost as if you get your uh, limb cut off and you have phantom pains. A sense of uh, void, missing, and sense of, uh, I don't know, longing in, in a way. But in the sadness, that, oh gosh, I, I, I do miss her, you know, I do love her and miss her. But there was also sweetness, oh my God, how beautiful is that? How beautiful is that sadness? How sweet is that? Because this is really showing, because it's not my sadness. It is the sadness that appears in that body-mind, it's not mine. And this, the sweetness comes from recognition that this is love. This is how love expresses at this moment. Oh, yes, how beautiful. If that was me there, of course, there would be instance resistant. I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel pain. I want to feel pleasure. But if there is to choose whatever is felt, oh, what a beauty. The sadness, the joy, the jealousy, the anger, everything is embraced as beautiful. And yeah, the, because when the dream is recognized for what it is, the dream, and the dreamer is recognized for what it is, the non-existent space-like basic screen. Who is there to have the, who is there to resist what is? And that's the beauty. So this is another way, I'll just probably stop it, I don't know, is, which is basically inviting for, for the investigation. So I don't want it this way, I want it that way. Who is the I? Who is the one who wants it. And now, if I'm really, really honest, I see the component of that I that wants. Well, wanting, wanting. What is really wanting is kind of a sucking from within, right? A desire, wanting something different. So it is a sensation. It's a physical sensation. Okay, you get it. Oh, thank you, Terry. Gosh, you look so different without, without your hair. My hair, my hair. <laughs> yes. Hello. Yeah. I'm well. How are you? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, so whenever whenever resistance shows up on the screen, is is an invitation to actually question who is the one who's resisting, who is the one who doesn't want, doesn't love what is, doesn't agree for that sadness or grief or envy or whatever. So that one, the component, the most obvious component of that is the physical component. So there is a longing, there is a, a sense of a void or suction coming in from the stomach like, ah, yeah, gosh, it feels so narrow, it feels so confined. But am I that sensations? Of course not. How can I be sensations? They're coming and going. So they, they are noticed or observed on the screen of awareness. So I'm not the sensations. What else is that? to the I that resists something. The idea that there is me putting that pressure or that resistance. But anybody has ever found it. Like resistance is obvious, it can be sensed, it can be felt, it can be experienced on the physical level or even on the emotional level as, as, a, as a sense of uh, uneasiness or feeling. But has anyone ever experienced the one who, has, who is actually applying it like, who is applying the, the pressure resistance? Who is applying pressure on the muscles? 
Well, there will be obviously the oxygen running through the veins, there will be blood, there will be brain uh, secreting different hormones or different neurotransmitters. So the whole universe, that universe is applying the sensations, not I, is the whole body. And of course, body is connected with the rest of the universe. Body can't stand up without the air to breathe, water to drink, food to eat, and a space to be. So actually, there is no I resisting. There is the whole world presenting on the screen as on, of awareness as resistance. So is it really my resistance? Now, the moment I view the resistance as just another screen, just another appearance on the screen, I'm obviously free. I'm the knowing of it. I am the screen. And the resistance just shows up. So how long is that resistance going to last, viewed from this perspective? Just kind of like almost dissected that, oh gosh, there's just physical sensations and emotional sensations and all coming up from the factory that is, eh, what a big deal about that. So, but that's the one way of investigating the resistance. So investigating the me, one could say, that is resisting and that can't be found. So resistance is just appearance. And when the resistance is investigated, it's usually gone. And what's left? It's just whatever is, whatever is happening. The seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling. This is, this is what is left. And in the absence of any idea that there is someone who is experiencing, life is already free, unbound, is experiencing, is happening to itself, is showing itself up to itself. If there is no idea of separate self, in the moments when there is no resistance, there is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong when we sit here and nobody wants something else. Or maybe somebody wants Bob to speak, me for example. <laughs> but when there is nothing wrong, there is no, there is no ego. It is not being constructed. It is not being invented to have any opposition to whatever is. So the world is not being opposed, it's not being resisted. So it's not being separate, really. In that moment when there is nothing wrong, when I don't invent the idea of there is someone here inside and there is world out there outside and they are separated by the, by the body or by the skin, without those thoughts, there is nothing wrong. And when there is nothing wrong, this is called natural state. And a natural state is the, is the state which is us in nature. Unless I think of a self or the ego, there isn't one. Without the thought or line of thoughts, line of the, of the whole production coming and relating and constructing it from memory, concept over concept, layer over layer, accumulated throughout the life to build up the structure that seems almost solid without maintaining that idea that there is a body, it was growing up, the body is mine, is female, is this, is that. Without those line of thinking, it's just this. It's, and, and if there is nothing wrong in this moment, that's the natural state. So the problem with enlightenment starts here when we are already in that natural state, in the moments when we are not constructing that fictitious entity, and we say, nah, that's not it. That natural state, nah, that must be something bigger, greater, must be a huge experience, must be a bliss, light effects, the ecstasy, not this, I'm not there yet. I don't feel any ego right now if I don't think about it, but I'm still not there yet. Well, who says that? And based on what? <laughs> what? <laughs> because there is nothing in the nature that is outside of it, and there is nothing in the appearance that is not it. So now, everything is that. But I'm not. How come? How could that be possible? I can only believe that I am not that. It's the... the Actually, what what's obscures the naturalness and the ease of, of the effortless being is the belief that I'm not that yet. So 
it is really about dropping off or questioning that one beliefs, b belief that separates me from the ultimate freedom or great enlightenment, which is basically an absence of the belief in separate me. So now, easy to say. It doesn't, it, I kind of knew it theoretically. Oof, in 2010, I learned that in India. But the me was still reconstructing itself. It was still, it felt like there is construction, like there is some sort of a contraction there. It felt like, yes, I understand it from the top of my head conceptually that there can't be any me. Yes, I agree, there can't be. But I still experience one, I, I still feel one. So, what am I going? Am I going to go with the belief that there can't be? Or am I going to go with personal experience that there is? That's how it seems like. It seems like because I believe in my personal experience so much that it seems real, but it's not. That's why they call the whole appearance Maya. We believe in the solidity of the bodies and the walls because they feel so real, we experience them real, but they are not. It's, uh, <laughs> it's funny, I was uh, a couple of days ago uh, talking to my baby sister and explaining her what we are doing here because she is so but she doesn't really speak English that well. I send her a Polish dubbing and she says, you know what, I don't really know what you are what you guys are talking about. I say, well, you know what? We just a bunch of a bunch of idiots who sit together and say, you know what? There is no you, you have no free will, you have no <laughs> volition. <laughs> there, there is no separate self. And we all sit and open our eyes and try to uh, wrap our heads around it, which is totally impossible. And it makes it even <laughs> more... <laughs> what did she say? Yeah, we had absolutely wonderful laugh. We were just laughing and laughing. I was actually uh, intentionally presenting it, it in the way that is so ridiculous <laughs> that you just have to stop trying. Yeah. Stop even trying to understand it. It's like I was telling her that uh, my mom was actually asking me a few times because that's what she couldn't really g uh, wrap her head around. Why is non-duality better than any other belief? You know, why is believing that there is no so separate self better than believing in whatever else, Jesus or something? And I said, it is not. It is absolutely not. If you want to believe that there is no self and still experience one, Oh, believe in anything else is not better than anything. On the level of the belief is confusing, is ridiculous, is funny. It's like, gosh, I had a really good laugh with my little sister. It's funny, it's idiotic. Like, come on, you know, there is no you. We're talking. Come on. You don't have any free will or choice. Come on, what about choosing my responses, you know? I can't choose the situation, but I can choose how to respond to it. Oh, sure, how valid is that? Oh, I can learn optimism. We have thousands of proofs. Attitude of gratitude, NLP, has evidence, science, scientific evidence. Yes, sure you can. But who is that you? So the, 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 whole, the whole show gets ridiculous when we still hear it and experience it from the level of conceptual thinking and logic. It is not logical that there is no me inside. I can make it funny, I did it for my sister. I say, yes, you, have, you think you have a little thing inside there that is pulling the strings and controlling and driving the ship. Nobody has ever seen one, but we all assume that there is. And everybody you ever meet assume that there is. So you never question it, why would you? Like, nobody does, but there isn't. So this is what I was trying to unsuccessfully explain to my mother. It is not about having better set of beliefs. It is not that it's easier and it's happier and it's lighter if you believe there is no you and you don't take things personally. No. It is about freeing yourself from need to believe anything, better or worse. If you have better beliefs, yes, you have better attitudes, you have better habits, fine. Your dream may be more pleasurable. But it is about waking up, not about changing, rearranging chairs on the Titanic. It is gonna, it is gonna sink. It doesn't matter, good dream, bad dream. If it is recognized as a dream, that's where the freedom lies. So believe that there is no me. No, that's not. Well, it may be a starting point, 
or it may be the kind of invitation to examine it, but it is not it. It's really believing in me that is blinding me to the reality of life. If I believe there is a me, I'm already confined, blinded, and I'm experiencing separation. It is about dropping the belief, not acquiring a better one. Now I believe in me, and now I believe in no me. Absolutely not. It is about checking it out, like verifying it. Don't let anyone ever tell you anything. Check it. Is there a me? Now, if, if I find one, wonderful, I'm going to believe in it. I, would, I won't even have to believe in it, because if it's there, well, it doesn't even need the belief. But is it? Is it? Nobody has ever found one. Not many is looking. Not many people ever check it. But if they do, well, there isn't one. So now it's actually uh, it's probably worthy to figure out how much you can, uh, what you are associating with the me. What, what, it feels like there is a me, but what is that feeling? Is that a feeling that, oh yeah, because I can tap my body and I can feel it, and I can tap his body and I won't feel it, it means this is a me and this is not me. Well, this is an assumption. Because it, this is basically taking credit for having the tools to experience sensations. You know, I can have a tools, I can have cameras all over, and I can say those are my eyes, extension of my eyes. I can have car, and this is an extension, this is a vehicle for transport, but this is not me. So the vehicle that is giving me an ability to, to sense the world is not necessarily what I am. And ultimately, everything is what I am. So not just this body, but everybody. But for the heck of pointing, this is why the pointing has, throughout the ages, always been constructed in the negatives. You can't figure out what you are because there, is, there isn't anything there that you can grasp. If there was a me, perhaps it could have been known in some ways. Not by me, because for me to know the me, I would have to be outside of the me. Obviously, I couldn't. But maybe Bob could know my me. It doesn't happen. He can only have the image which is going to be changing. I can assure you he has a different image of me when I have premenstrual syndrome <laughs> and I'm irritable and picky. And he has a different image of me when I'm just being blissful because of whatever, the beauty that just, yes, gosh, the, I have different image of the cats when they get, where they're getting nuisance. This is all fluid. There's nothing real and substantial about it. And it's always only made of thoughts and images and concepts and past experiences is always based in comparison to, to the past, so it can't be relied. So if I can't find the me, nobody else can find, can find the me. Obviously, me is out of question. It can't be found. So what can be done, the reverse can be done. And that's the uh, typical Buddhist investigation called neti neti. The reverse can't be done. I can figure out what I am not. So whatever I'm aware of can't be the awareness because it is a content of awareness. So if I'm aware of my body, I'm not my body. Apart from that, from the fact that the body is constantly changing. So I can't be something that is changing because I'm aware of the change. If I can witness the change in the body, I'm obviously the witnessing, not the body. So same thing with everything else. Like, just like the body is changing, the feelings, emotions in the body are changing, and the thoughts are changing, and the life situations are changing, relationships are changing. Everything, all of it is being known. So all of it is a content appearing in the awareness. So the one thing that is never changing is the awareness, and this is one thing that I can never be aware of. Can I be aware of my awareness? No, because I would have to make it to an object that is in the awareness. And obviously, I'm the awareness of it. So any, any attempts to make any pointer to be an object that mind is trying to grasp are just misguided, waste of time. 
mind is trying to do it and that's okay. It's good to just recognize it. Grasping awareness, grasping space, make it to an object and trying to identify with it. Okay, I will try now to identify myself as a space. No, there is no I that is trying to do an action and embodying or imagining itself to be space. This is still the activity of the mind. Now, this activity of trying to identify is known. And that knowing is completely effortless. It doesn't take any action. It doesn't take any trying. That knowing is effortless and that knowing can't be denied. That being and that knowing can't be denied and it can't be grasped as an object. And if it can, for some reason, people may have really, really vivid imagination. What is the space in which that one is known? So the one thing that can't be questioned and can't be denied is the fact of the being, the knowing of the being. And of course, they are, you know, the questions often like <coughs> on the last meeting, well, how about when we sleep? Okay, just ask me that question when you sleep. If you still have that problem when you sleep, wonderful, we're going we're gonna to address it. But <laughs> in my experience, when I sleep, the questions don't arise. So there is no need to answer them, there is no need to go to the mind, there is no need for any pointing. So if there is a gap in the, in the memory, in the recording of the activity during the sleep, there is also a gap in identification with the me, so there is no need to question. So there is no problem whatsoever. And of course, you know, the idea of sleeping is again going to the mind and going to the idea of time. Like Richard, she, he had a beautiful pointer, which is really beautiful, like how uh, from the experience it seems like this life essence is constructing that entity. Early in the morning I wake up, I don't really have all the memories of what I am. I don't even know which day of a week it is. But it slowly downloads. Ah, oh, yeah, it's Sunday. Oh, okay, we do this. Ah, oh, okay, I'm this. So it kind of constructs itself when it wakes up. And it deconstructs itself. It drops everything off and becomes just nothing when it sleeps. And then the body comes up again. We don't know whether the body exists or not. Somebody else can tell us, but this somebody else is also a construct, a figure in the dream. We can dream someone to tell us what's true. We can dream scientists to tell us what's true. That's beautiful. It's, it's good to recognize it as a dream too and, and, and totally appreciate it. But even this beautiful model of constructing and deconstructing the um, the body or the, or the biocomputer, the entity, is gorgeous, is to be used. But it can be very easily thrown away if you see how it relies on time, being linear, being something sequential, not being the reality of this moment right now. Because if there was a yesterday, where is it now? It is only in my memory. How about yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a big day yesterday, so Bob was a little bit tired. And before the meeting, he did the bicycle exercises, and uh, yeah. But anyway, the, the, any ideas of the moment different than that are the ideas, are the mental images that I'm creating right now. And I'm not creating them, and I am creating them, oh, of course. I mean, in a way, they are showing up. And I, as totality, am expressing them through the body-mind. But I, as the body-mind, have absolutely no doing at all with anything. Just like I have no doing with growing my hair. I have no doing with creating, manufacturing thoughts or choosing thoughts. Yeah, that's half an hour. <laughs> yes, so uh, now... Inviting everyone in. It's actually a strong group. Everyone's been exposed to this, this for, uh, for long enough. Is there any me left in there that wants to be looked at? And if it is, gosh, tell me all about it. We'll see if it stands up to investigation. If it is anything more than just random sensations, thoughts and beliefs just floating in the, in the awareness.
No one? Uh, no, miss. Someone will start soon enough, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Just it was the, hard, the first question is the hardest one. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Because freedom from having questions is actually, uh, this is it. And Bob was, when he was in the hospital, he was actually asking me when I was covering up for him. He says, okay, when you finish speaking, do people jump with questions? Or is there a, a gap, at least a little bit of a silence? Oh, yeah, you know, first questions usually hard to come out. He says, great, that's it. If you can create that gap of silence when the question doesn't come, wonderful, this is it. Because the question is the questioner. When I have the question, who am I? There is already a, a assumption that there is a me who wants to know. If the question doesn't arise, there is no, there is no questioner either. There's no one there, there's nothing wrong. I suppose I've got a noticing that um, when you swim in either the no me stuff or the psychological unblocking stuff, but that's, you know, expansive with a little pattern. Yeah. Um, long enough, you know, things just do keep getting better and better and better, even, you know, better is just a term, but... Yeah, there's more freedom, there's, there's more, more free... And funny that you said the word freedom mm. is in your head, because that was the word <laughs> coming out here. Yeah. Um, it's precisely the word, because, like, for example, you know, I might call my shit to do with scarcity and stuff like that, and that distracts from the no self. Mm. I don't have the sense of myself, but I still keep going into the issues, you know, wrapped up in them. Um, <coughs> even though I've never located a self thing, so that's not really been an issue, it's been a bypass for me. But um, today, like I've realised someone's got a tea over my computer and the sound wasn't working, and it was just like totally free. It was, <laughs> there was no thought, oh no, at all. There you go. Yeah, and, and also then I noticed I then went to do some activity to look at making money in this particular area that I hadn't quite been doing, mm. and not my usual massive putting off. But um, and then and then just the thought was okay, I need to get money to get a computer, even though I'm coming from a very little amount of money to start with, and it's like very unlikely in the next year or something. But um, well, to even get the sound bit fixed. And it's mm -hmm. just, oh, okay, so, you know, how much, you know, how much would it cost to be able to project the computer onto the TV and hear it that way or whatever, or just mm -hmm. do everything from my phone. Or, and it was just, yeah, there was just freedom. There was just like no, oh, no thought whatsoever. No investment, but, like no personal no, investment. And like other times mm -hmm. when there'd been a little thought the computer might be stuffed or lost or something, it was, you know, there was always, it was getting less and less. But yeah, that was a really interesting one. In fact, it freed me up to then go and do the activities to look at the crowdfunding stuff I was supposed to look at. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it was, yeah, freedom. That's, yeah, that's it. And, and there's been a bit of an underlying sense today of, yeah, it's not really, there's the patterning happening and it's not really me so much at all, really. Yeah. Um, it's not a complete disconnect from it, but it's... Um, it's constantly coming up. Mm. Constantly coming up that it's not it, that it's fairly impersonal. Cool. Yeah. That's it's, yeah. It's, it's a, it has their parents that it makes it you know ex impersonal, mm -hmm. but really I reckon it's just it comes up one after the other, boom boom boom. So it means that just as often as, as a thought comes up around as something that's happening, a thought comes up that it's not really me, mm. that it's fairly impersonal. So it's always, but it appears to people that it's a blanket. Um, so it's here and there. Blanket, sort of sensation. Yeah. Um, come here. Yeah, so basically, yeah, freedom can happen when you swim in this stuff. Mm. And, and if you don't have the habit of contracting around psychological stuff, then if that's expensive for you, then freedom there as well. Yeah. And I'm actually starting to think from what I've been hearing from people who have a clear no self, but there's still behaviour going on, and they can't necessarily feel all the emotions that go with it. It becomes a lot more difficult to see the subtleties of, you know, they're just not bothered that much. And if they're slightly mm. bothered, it's, it's um, it seems to me it's much easier to get rid of your blocks first because <laughs> you can still feel the fear, you can feel the, all the stuff. Wham, bam! It's really damn obvious. So, you, so I think some. Um, Kind of disappearing of that stuff for certain patterns is kind of beneficial before 
<laughs> a loss of all the sensations because they still have behaviours that might be blocking some little desires that pop up occasionally in little ways, but it's much harder to see. <laughs> That's a cool, going cool on. way to look at it. I like yeah, it. A so cool way. Like if you don't, if you, if you if you don't really break through the sense of separation, but you're still in the process of losing the desires first that's mm. that's a positive side to it yeah because when you already lose the sense of separate self so to you don't care you know, yeah you don't care but then occasionally <laughs> you might get frustrated because something's not happening you but know. but you're okay with frustration yeah and you're okay with it too but yeah. then um <laughs> it's too late you but, yeah but then occasionally <laughs> frustration might come along what you know, just, just, this is lovely idea here but this is lovely thing and it's not happening and can't locate why because they're not feeling it. Why would you even want to locate well, it? Well, yeah, but then occasionally, it. if that little thing comes up, spikes up briefly. Yeah, that's just a thought. Yeah, 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 and that's <laughs> also known, but then it can happen that way. And, and it's kind of lovely, also. Um, and also, that's a pointer that may mean that more dropping happens. Because mm. for me, the dropping of the block seems to be this, a stronger thing to more space, more clarity than <coughs> dropping of me. Mm hmm. Because um, the me isn't so invested in any way, it's the dropping the blocks that seems to do it. That's one and the same thing. Yeah. There's the tiny little aspects of kind the of. way where the, you know, if there is any block, that's mm. already obviously resistance because mm. you wouldn't call it block if that was just a space. Mm. It's so triggering in when things are triggered in. Mm. Um, when things are triggered in, when they're not being triggered, there's no, I don't look, I don't see a sense of I, I don't, decision making never happens. Nobody any says, time. nobody sees sense yeah, of I. Yeah, none of those things. Um, then nobody much, can ever mm, see sense of I. So the questions never even arises about any of those decision making, all those things. Mm. Um, but when it pop right into the dream, there's no such thing as non duality, because I'm mm. just dreaming about some particular thing. Yes. Um, yeah, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I like the line of thinking, like finding mm. a positive. This this is the way the life is unfolding. Mm. And obviously the life is intelligent and this is a beauty in the way this is unfolding in you in It your really is. All it is yeah. is a pointer, which means that totally possibly mm. I'll let you know, but um, possibly um, there will be more of a movement to the dropping blocks rather than watching T V. Mm. Just because it's come up as a is a pointer that this may be an effective thing. Yeah. So it may happen more. That's all. And again, seeing beauty instead of feeling disappointed. That why didn't it happen yet? Big bang, great enlightenment. That's you know that's that's part of the of the blindness, believing that there is a me to who it didn't happen. Instead, you're completely uninvested in it, mm. and you see the beauty of the process, completely impersonally yeah. admiring it. Mm. This is it. And relaxed in that because this it, is it. it. It's not a thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's that's the freedom. Mm -hmm. Not wanting what is not. Mm -hmm. If I think I'm not enlightened and I don't want to be enlightened, I don't want what is not. I'm already free. It cancels mm -hmm. itself out. Mm -hmm. So there's just relax into the things that aren't a block for this pattern, mm -hmm. or for the particular wherever you are. Yeah, yeah, loving <laughs> um, what is, and then and then. And then the light shines on the things that are a block for that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, being at peace with what is. Natural mm. state. Mm. <laughs> Gorgeous. Thank you. I think since I've been coming, um, Kat, you know, is that what you were saying before, of <coughs> just accepting things as they are, or loving what it is, you know. Is, yeah. um, you don't realise just how much you, you do resist things, you know, like unpleasantness or what you consider to be unpleasant. Um, you know, and it's just, it's, it is just following on from what Tony was saying, just that sense of enormous expansiveness and freedom and just being able to accept what is, whether it's upsetting or, or not or... You know, um, like I had invested quite a lot to go on a retreat to Ayers Rock and mm -hmm. um, just recently and um, it was with about 20 people and I was really looking forward to it. And the night before I came down with gastro and I just oh. couldn't go. <clears throat> and it was like, I, I somehow knew that, I, you know, it was like, 
I knew I couldn't go. You know, it was sort of like just things playing out, mm -hmm. and um, and it just wasn't right time to go. Yeah. And so it was, even though there was the initial disappointment, it was sort of quite re relieving because I sort of thought, uh -huh. well, yeah, I can be really upset because I desperately wanted to go, mm -hmm. but I also knew something else that wasn't in the it wasn't in yeah. the larger plan, mm -hmm. and to just accept that. And to be happy with that, you know, it was, um, you know, it was so be it sort of thing. Beautiful, because now you can see that me, I'm disappointed, mm. but life yeah. what is this now yeah. my will or die will. Yeah. Now you're kind of embracing both. That yeah. my will is kind of allowed, but thy will is completely accepted. Yeah, and just you know, I'd had I'd, I'd taken off some time off work without pay and I just sort of thought oh well this is my retreat now at home yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh boy if it's for you it will come back yeah that's <laughs> right yeah yeah amazing is to be able to actually really embrace the this this level of of uh, agreeing or accepting what life is offering yeah like you know for whatever reason Life is throwing, they say even the, the so-called spirituality says, things are not happening to you but for you, you know, mm -hmm. for you to grow, for you to... Of course, it all assumes that there is a you, and the you are getting, receiving all the things that are going to make you better, stronger, freer from concepts or barriers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And those type of beliefs, they can actually give a little bit of a relief or like some sort of a soothing balm on the, on the, on the ego thrown apart, having all the accidents and incidents happening to it. It's, uh, it's helping. But really, yeah, it's, the beyond. it's beyond totally, that, it? totally beyond. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you look at how life is unfolding without adding a meaning, oh, this is bad, but in long run, maybe it will be good. Or maybe at the end of the life, I will understand that mm -hmm. this, what now feels bad, is a turning point and is great. And we all had these moments when we were dreading, and a few years later, oh gosh, I hope, I wish, I, I'm so <laughs> grateful it never happened otherwise. But really, the whole commentary of adding meaning is not necessary. You can look at life in a way that Things happen as they do. Now I can have a little story about it, but I will know it is a story. Mm. And I will still see how beautifully that river goes through the rapids, banks, waterfalls, stagnants. The life is just unfolding. And I can give it a meaning, positive, negative, neutral, and I cannot do anything at all and just stay silent in awe. That's what it is. Bob has been diagnosed with Parkinson's. <gasps> okay. We don't say this is horrible or this is great. No, nothing. It's just, ah, okay. That's what it is. Or he needed hip operation. Or Jim has the, you know, it. there is no adding <coughs> to it. And when there is no adding to it, obviously all the adding and meaning making is strengthening the habit of going to the head and creating drama and satisfying our need for strong feelings, strong sensations, because that drama will make, of course, if I say, my God, this is so dreadful, <gasps> then my body will secrete hormones, cortisol, it will shrink, it will be a lot of things going on there, and that will be intense, and that will be entertaining, and that will be reinforcing that separate me, that will be, that is reconstructed in that way because this is happening to me and this is so dramatic, this is so big. And of course, this is not to undermine the dramas. Whenever something juicy is happening to people, it is absolutely to be embraced. And when it's unbearable, it is to be helped to carry around, take it on your back and carry. Of course, pain, suffering, dramas, yes. But it is not necessary. The life can be lived in a way when things happen and the good and bad and pleasant and painful without the labels, they're just things happening. Mm. And they are all met in that silence. Okay, this happened. Now we want a story about it later on. Life will de deliver and we can take it on board as true, as gospel and reinforce the I 
or we can just watch it. Oh, what a movie, what a story. And still meet life with whatever it shows in that silence. That's what is. The, the seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, thinking. That's what is, as it is at this moment. And savor it. On the beginning, it may feel a little bit blunt. Like, come on, without the story, without the drama, uh, it's nothing to think about, it's nothing to chew on, it's nothing to get excited, stressed. We are addicted to this strong bipolar pattern of pain, pleasure, pain, pleasure, and throughout life we are chasing this pleasure so bad that we desensitize our natural sensitivity. The people who never go to nature, who never smell roses, who never listen to music, or background, or listen to anything, because they're so desensitized from the present moment and so attracted to the drama that gives them these highs, emotional highs and emotional lows. And of course, you want some water? Thank oh. And, and, and of course, with that lack of sensitivity, they need to, because, yeah, if the, if the, if the, if the, um, if the dramas are mostly highs, fantastic. But you can't experience high if you don't experience low. Mm -hmm. To experience more of the high, and if this, is the, if this is the mission life has in this body, it will have to deliver the background. There won't be a day without the night. There have to be a background of the opposite. So now we go on the bipolar, we go on the drugs, or we go on anything, and it becomes unbearable. As much of the high, that much of the low. And where is the balance? Where is that? How to learn again to appreciate the silence in which nothing, seemingly nothing's going on, and the stillness in which seemingly nothing's going on. But when we find it like when we really drop off into that background, into that nothingness, there is never nothing going on. And what is going on is the mind can only reflect memory, imagination, future, past, the stories that mind is chewing. But what is really going on right in this moment is absolute miracle that is completely missed because the mind takes things for granted. The mind takes future and past. It happened, it will happen, and the mental images, there is the miracle of that is completely lost. The fact that whatever, the carpet, the glass of water, they exist, they have being, they have this stillness in them, they, they, they have the solidity but they don't. They are atoms circulating, vibrating. There's nothing there, and yet they appear. The thinking cannot take us to the, to the intimacy that we can have with the reality of the moment, the intimacy in which I recognize the reality as the extension or expression of my own self. The thinking can only give us highs and lows. And the natural state is something vastly more, I, I wouldn't even say satisfying, because who is there to be satisfied? <laughs> but but there, is, there is a mystery and magic in, a, in just simple being without running to distractions, to trying to be somewhere else, think of something else, experience something else, taste, touch, smell, whatever, something, but not this. Chasing something that will make me whole and complete. Bigger meal or better adventure or better partner or money or status. That's a slavery. That's a bondage. Wanting what is not is a suffering. Wanting what is, actually you don't even need to want it. Wanting what is is actually freedom from wanting. Because, and this is also what is, this is funny, this is uh, how the ego actually tricks us to believing that once you get your perfect job or your wonderful partner or your great car or whatever, you are going to be happy. And why would the mind say that? Of course, because it has experienced that for so long. You know, as a baby, you want the ice cream and you throw the tantrum and the mother gives you an ice cream. Tantrum's gone. 
Wonderful. So the moment of relief from the tantrum, the, it's not the ice cream that makes you happy. It's the absence of tantrum. It's the absence of wanting that makes us happy. So we get, I remember I was asking one of the captains I was working with, if he can tell me about the most happy moment in his life. And he says, I passed the exam and I became the captain. And this was something, a wonderful, wonderful, brilliant guy. But this was like for, uh, he, was, he started from the, from the deck crew. He was a deck boy, then he was an ordinary seaman, then he was able body seaman, and he was a boson, and he was third officer forever. He didn't go, like I went to the study, five years academy, and I got the license right away, then just the sea time would make me a captain. But for him, he didn't do, he started from scratch and it took him lifetime and he needed to go back to do the courses and prove himself, 30 exams. It took him, I think he was 50 when he became a captain. He was wow. dreaming about it since he was 13 year old. Imagine having a dream who motivates your life for so long. And by the way, he is probably one of the best captains, if not the best, I was working with. Because that motivation made him, that he was single-pointed. Now he got his license. 40 years of desiring, gone, or 35, whatever, gone. Imagine a relief coming from this. Contraction. I want it. I don't have it. I want it. I don't have it. What else can I do to get what I want? Now, please. He didn't want anything. I did ask him how long it lasted. Well, he's honest enough to say he's still working as a captain. He still enjoys it. But I've seen him angry. I've, he I've seen him frustrated. It's not the same sense of relief from, from suffering. But this is, this is what uh, following the, the desire basically does. It promises us the happiness and it delivers. But the happiness is not lasting because the happiness only comes from the absence of, of, the, of the desire, the absence of the craving. I want it, I need it, I won't be happy unless I'll get it. So when this condition is resolved, but how, how quickly we start craving something else. How quickly when we get our dream job or dream car or, or whatever, or jewelry, something else. Because the seeking mind has the job, which is seeking. It wants something next. That's, the, that's its job. And it is doing it beautifully and it should be acknowledged. If there is an idea of getting this body more comfortable, more happy, that seeking part of the mind is seeking. Enlightenment is one of the things it is seeking. Whether it is a big car or it is a, a huge amount of money or it is an enlightenment, it is still a thing that the mind is going to provide to make this better, happier. How wonderful, how beautiful. If a bigger thing is taken care of, a more trivial thing will turn up. That's it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, whatever it is going to seek is always that beautiful intention of self-love. And, 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 and then when another big thing comes, you go, oh shit, I wish it stuck. You know, what a waste for all that trivial stuff to be bothered about. Because <laughs> another big thing was around the corner, you know, to bother me. <laughs> That's more the running from than the trying to get. But, yeah. but, but see, when the identification with the seeking mind is broken, when I am not the seeking mind anymore, but I'm the witnessing of it, I can totally love it. I can appreciate it. I can appreciate the seeking mind when I go and do the grocery shop shopping and I buy the nicest, the healthiest greens for Bob. I'm seeking them. The seeking mind is trying to get better, but I am not that. I am not identified with that. The seeking mind is the tool, but I am the screen using the tool, the awareness using the seeking mind. If I was the seeking mind, the dialogue would be completely different. And I would never be satisfied because the job of the seeking mind is to seek. It's not to find. The finding mind is to find. Seeking mind is to continue seeking. If I identify myself with that, I'm fucked. But if I'm witnessing that, I can love it. I can appreciate it. 
I can be free of it. I can use it. You just Google a bit. Oh, yeah, that pen does that, and then it just tails off. It doesn't extend for as long. So you just sort of notice. Yeah, oh, you, know, you come awake to the pattern doing its thing, and it's just a bit of a, oh, yeah, and then it just goes. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> I just noticed anyway, it's a bit shorter. Yeah, you can mm. see the pattern coming and going, mm. and you are the witnessing, the knowing of it, mm. not the pattern. And if you don't go the next step and say, I witnessed, if you stop before that, if, it's, if it stops before that, yeah, then, then you, you just see where others might add on, that, and I'm viewing from a certain point. Mm. But, but if it starts just before that, and you, you recognize that it can go a bit further or it doesn't have to, mm. that's kind of a nice one to see too. Yeah. Yeah, of course, if there is an I that is witnessing, mm. that I has to be witnessed. <laughs> mm. And then, yeah, and so on. And it's just, it's, it's in a progression. It, come, it seems to be a solid package, mm. but actually, if it gets seen more closely, it's just things popping up one after the other. Yeah. And it gives an apparent overview, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you say sometimes about the movie, that you have yeah. the stills. Mm. Moving so fast that, that they create. You think it's solid. Yeah. But but if if somewhere like, like you were saying you learned in India many years ago mm. to kind of look for the gaps or that the gaps are the thing really. Yeah. Um. And I think I guess you guys made it clear to me a couple of years ago. So it's sort of been coming from that more than the other way around. Mm. And um. Yeah, it's just it's always that that just seems the pertinent thing to have the filter for. So it just seems pertinent here to filter, or so it has seemed that way because that's what's happened, to filter for where, where are people coming from openness rather than where are people coming from not getting this at all. And, and, it, and it's just suspiciously seems, that there's a suspicion here because I can't know that pop, nothing just pops in, you know, flashes in, no, no one knows this, humans don't know, it's not known, that flashes in as much as any kind of ideas popping up about mm. what, the stories popping up about what, how it could be. Mm -hmm. It's not knowing, it's also popping up. And um, and also seeing where the gaps might be, and also try driving people into their gaps, yeah. Rather than assuming they're not getting any of this, and, and they're blank faced, and and it's all just chatter, and it's all just head stuff. Mm. Instead of that filter, I found the other filter suspiciously, because <laughs> I can only ever say there's a suspicion that it may be more effective, or it has has felt like it's been pretty effective here. Mm. To, but it just seems to be a behaviour that's all, perhaps always been here, and it, and I can't really say anything about it. But this is sufficient, <laughs> but it's effective to, to look for the gaps, yeah, rather than to look for the um, disconnects. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not always, and not in all places and times, but I, I'm, I'm, I kind of like that filter. But yes. it's there. It does feel like it's been quite effective here. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful because yes, very often, especially when you do the netty netty thing, you you see uh, you look for obscuration, you look for look for what stands in the way, rather than look for what what's already what is already embraced. Yes. Yeah, not there really. yeah. yeah, and Bob often shows that, and it's a beautiful example. See how much more space is there than there is objects. It's just so much more obvious, so much more of it. But the eye is constru constructed the way that it, it, it picks out objects. I've well, never thought that metaphor before. Because I always thought he was talking about literally <laughs> people don't notice space and they're not really not aware of their full environment. But actually that level of metaphor, <laughs> then you take it down to you know, what's there when you're not thinking about it as opposed to the thing out rising yeah. inside when you're thinking about it. Yeah, there's a lot more space. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Now, mm. fully. That's that's where you have to hear the things over and, and over. And the mind is always going to objects too. You know. Yes. Mm. Thought yeah. processes. Mm. Whatever you're thinking is an object. That's <coughs> right. So yeah. we go to that rather than the space beyond it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's actually you, you can even see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you can even see how uh, space. We are not seeing space, but we see objects. And exactly as you say, the same thing happens in the mind. We don't really notice the mind can't grasp the silence, the gaps between the thoughts. It grasps thoughts, and thoughts are objects. Mm. Thoughts are to objects in the, in the space of thinking, just like physical objects are 
in a space of seeing and the sounds are in the space of hearing. Like yeah. really everything is just emptiness and form. Whether the form appears as a sound or as an object that is seen or as a thought, there's still emptiness appearing as form. They're just different way they're vibrating. The way Bob is uh, talking about, there is just one vibrating into various shapes, forms and patterns. That's probably about the most beautiful and direct and precise expression or description of what's going on. Constantly, the one cognizing emptiness or intelligent uh, space appearing, vibrating, stillness, vibrating into different forms. And the body is one of the forms, very complex. There is so many sub-vibrations there going on. The thoughts, th the complexity actually grows with the attention. The further we look, that very, that very energy coming out from my eyes is making it more complex. That's how, that's the how, how whole appearance look like a Schrodinger cut experiment. If the cut is there in the box, but nobody watch it, and it's a 50-50 chance that the cut, you know, there is some radioactive thing, uh, the cut is alive or dead. Well, the reality is the wave of probability. There is no solidity if there is no observer. That's, uh, mm. yeah, the, the whole physics is just showing that, yeah, we are imagining the observer, we are imagining the self, we are imagining the solid world. There is just energy appearing as matter, E equals mc square. Um, so don't worry about turning the camera. <laughs> okay. Um, I've got a book that says that according to... I think I at least hear you. According to Heis Heisenberg principle... Oh, yeah. The more you, the more you look at something, the mm -hmm. more it changes. The more you are affected by by observation. Absolutely. That it, that it actually isn't something separate. Mm -hmm. But it's particip it, But it's the one thing. Absolutely. Same happens with psychology. The psychology says the more often you are relating the story, the more complexity, depth, and differences the story will gain. Every time they will be slightly different. It's like really, it is a life. It's so, it's so transient. It's moving. There's nothing still. There's nothing that stays the same. And it is constantly recreated by the light of attention. So by seeking like the ultimate understanding, it's a, it's a myth because there is... Um, from that point then I'm standing yes. and still looking at something else that's looking right. at the next horizon yes. yeah mm -hmm. that's the tricky bit very good one yes that's the that's the, the really really tricky bit you keep it we we um, keep we, it we, we, <laughs> oh, we um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I keep everyone involved. It's involved as well. Yeah. This is a <laughs> yeah. Great audio has not been invented yet. Yeah. Um, we need a um, the dr a drone with a microphone that <laughs> just can just like <laughs> detect where the sound is. We got this one. We got this one from the guys from Los Angeles, but oh. unfortunately, it grasps that you know if I put it here. Tony won't be heard, Price and directed. Bob won't be heard either. It's omnidirectional instead yes, of uni. Yes, but yeah. uh, we tested it. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so, 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 yeah, look, Kat's mentioned on a, on a, a couple of occasions um, how tricky this self is, this me is, or, or, or the mind is, or just the thought process is. And it, when we first get involved in this, it's kind of um, initially liberating to come to see that thoughts just arise and disappear. That there's no thinker of the thoughts. They just happen, you know. And I've said it a hundred times, and you can test that. If you have any control over your thoughts, just stop thinking, you know. Literally just stop. And not many people can, you know. Thoughts will just come and go. So we start to see that. So there's an education process that happens, you know, by, by um, coming to this group or 
groups like it or self-inquiry. There's an education that happens and you start to see things and initially you, you, you might come in here and all the stuff that's rattling, rattling around in our head is so, so close that we kind of wear it like a skin, you know. There's no, there's no separation in it. We can't see it occurring. In other words, whatever is occurring, I am. We sort of just, we become it, you know. So you come in, you're asked to look and look and look and look and you get challenged with, you know, do you choose to think the thoughts that you think or do they just arise? And after a while, you know, there's like a, a separation that seems to occur. You start to shed the, that skin of being the thoughts and you arrive in a place where you're actually able to start witnessing them. And you witness them and you witness them and, and then you go through a whole long process. Well, that's a relative term. Um, it takes as long as it's going to take, I suppose. But then you seem to go through this long process of acquiring, acquiring information. You know, I see this, I see that, I see I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that, I'm not that. It even says, and I, and I can't find a me. I can't find a me. And I'm aware of all the thoughts that are rattling through my head. I'm aware of it. The last, the very, 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 very last thing to be seen, and I, it's like a, um, I'm going to call it a core me. And it's really close. And it's lodged in here somewhere. And the reason it feels that it's lodged in the body is because that core me completely identifies with the presence, with its presence, with, with the aliveness, with the awareness. It thinks it's that. So all, all that... So even when there's awareness of all the jargon that goes on between our ears, all of it, even when there's an awareness of that, what you'll find is that there's a me still there claiming ownership of that awareness. I'm aware. Yeah. Once all that veil is seen through, like really seen through, I've heard Bob say it a thousand times, and even other people in the group. And it, it kind of sounds a bit sarcastic, and it's not meant to be. It's really not. But eventually you'll get to a point where someone is going to say to you, who wants to know? Who really wants to know? Because in my experience, I saw it all intellectually. My me saw it all. Let me rephrase that. I thought my me saw it all. I thought my me saw it all. Nothing to do with the me at all. Awareness was aware of it all. That natural state. But the hook is that last little bit, you know, and you kind of get to a point where you go, look, I know, I know, I know. I see it all. I've been doing this for ages. Yet I, I still feel like I'm here. I still feel like I'm stuck. And we don't question. It's really interesting. The last thing we question or the last thing we seem to look at is that last core me that's going, yep, got it, but I'm stuck. We don't look at that. Because initially when we come in here, we think that the me is just nothing but the content of all the thinking. We go, oh, if I see that, then somehow I'm just going to miraculously wake up. <laughs> I'm, me, is somehow me going to miraculously wake up. So there's, all, there's this last sense of a me that's there. It's, it's, and I've said it before, it's really, really close. I don't know how else to describe it. It's 
close. It's like it's not in that content that we initially observe in, in, in relation to our thinking and what goes on in, in the thinking. You know, hearing a thought go, ah, oh, you're useless. Or hearing a thought go, yeah, I got it, I haven't got it. I like this, I like that, I get it, I don't get it. You know, we can kind of hear all that or see it, if you like. But there's a, there's a core there. That was my experience, just purely speaking from my own experience. And that core me, that final, let's say, that final me, what I discovered was that it was identified with that sense of presence. The me, my me, believed it was here. In other words, here, present, present. And then I heard myself going, I still feel I'm here. I, I, sorry, I, 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 sorry, rather, um, I understand, but I still feel I'm stuck. It was really weird that that was the last core me that I, I saw. Oh, it was the weirdest thing. Like, why that wasn't seen first? I don't know. Well, and then and, and then what I what I discovered was that the reason that that core me was felt so real is because what I said before, it identifies with being present. Yet, what I discovered, you can be fucking present without that me. Well, yeah, because it does assume an identity. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So that present, that presence is prior. Mm. Without that presence, there's no me. I can't have a me without that presence. You know. So what happened then, Terry? <coughs> just saw just that. Was... I just saw that. Yeah. I literally just saw that. I saw that that last little bit of clinging that my self identity was doing. That last little bit, because it went, and it was obvious. I still feel like I'm fucking here. What the fuck am I missing? And I went, who said that? <laughs> what the fuck was that? What's that about? You know? So it's really interesting. It's kind of, for, it, for me, it was kind of, um, uh, the understanding came to me in, in, in layers, or in a couple of layers, really. And, and first it was, just observing all the thoughts. Yeah, okay, yeah. And I can see I haven't got free will. Yep, yep, yep. You know, this is how tricky this mind or this me or this dualistic, so-called dualistic person or thinking can be. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, of course I can see I haven't got any free will. <laughs> Who the fuck's saying that? Who the fuck is saying that? Me. Yeah? So... <laughs> It can get real tricky, but to get to that point of seeing that core, by the way, there's not a core, but, but there was the identification with that presence. Yeah. To get to there, I had to peel, peel back the onion. I just had to. I had to. But, you know, Bob often says, just reach in and pull the fucking whole plant out by the roots and, <laughs> and throw it away. You know, but and that's that, and that's all and good. But and that's what occurred for me in the end. And that's when you sat in a chair and yeah. did whatever for yeah. that long. Yeah. Well, I became extraordinarily, naturally interested in presence. Totally. Just I just saw through the illusion of that that final sense of me. You know, the last thing that I had to let go of was this sense of presence. Had to let go of that because I was owning it. It's mine. It's my awareness. I didn't even know I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I really didn't know I was doing it. You know, I was so caught up in going, yeah, yeah, I see all that, 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 <laughs> that and that and I understand and yep, I got it. Fucking I'm still here. You know, 
so that, you know, you'll hear people say, I've heard it a couple of times here today, um, oh, I see a thought come up and it's an uncomfortable thought and um, I just choose not to get involved in it. Mm. Or I can see that I'm not accepting something. Or I can see I need to accept something. That's all fine, you know. That that I just described is that first layer. Seeing what you're not. Seeing all the content of all the thoughts and, and, and seeing all that. But ultimately, in the end, you get thrown right back on this real, uh, I'm still here. You just do. Yeah? So while you've got, um, oh, I see a thought and I'm choosing to ignore it. I'm following you. Yeah. I'm choosing to, to ignore it. Who is choosing to ignore it? So there's a deeper, yeah. there's a deeper looking. Well, I'm to do that. Yeah. There's a closer. You've said it before. You told me before. Yeah. So there's a closer looking that just happens. You can't make it happen. You fucking to totally can't make it happen. It'll happen, happen when it happens. If you can at least start to observe that process that goes on, you know. Okay, this bad thought's going on. I'm just going to accept them or I'm going to shine the love of the, the light of love on them or whatever. Um, and somehow that's going to make me feel better, you know. Who? Always comes back to who? Who's doing that? Who's thinking that? Who's feeling that? Who's having an opinion on that? Who sees that? Who sees I'm not accepting? Who sees I'm having bad thoughts that I'm now choosing to push away or accept, you know. Who wants to feel better? Who wants, yeah, or who wants to feel better. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Peggy's watching us. She says, thank you, Terry. Shining brilliant. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Well, last week, I don't want the camera on me. Okay. <laughs> last week when we left here, we went home and then he had to go to work, and the night I was home on my own, I was nice and, you know, in my element, beautiful. When he come home, somehow, I was having good thoughts prior to him coming home. When he come home, um, said something about, I don't know, something, and didn't acknowledge, and I got angry. Then I started to say something to him, and again, he changed my subject, and I got angry really angry that I'm thinking, that's it, I'm going to walk out on him, I'm going to go, I was so angry, I'm thinking, why am I getting so angry? And then he was sort of saying things that didn't agree with me, and I was getting very, 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 very angry. But meanwhile, I'm thinking, who's getting angry? It's really hard when you're really angry <laughs> to ask, who's, who's getting, getting angry? angry? Why have I got this anger? What's what's all about? Well, I was really hard. Then he said to me, oh, why don't you do your homework? Why don't you say, you know, I'm doing that. Don't talk to me. Just don't talk to me. I'm doing that. Just let me be. And by doing and doing and doing it, all of a sudden this peace came. He wasn't my enemy anymore. He yeah. became my friend again. Beautiful. Yeah, but that's it. Stop that. And I was just completely gone. Like it was ne never happened. But something didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> this didn't happen. Mm. Mm. Still stuck. Look, sometimes. When you say what you're saying, I relate to it. Well, like, like I said, there, there's there's a, um, a seeingness that seems to have to happen before that. Sure. There's a seeingness that yeah. seems to have to happen before that. Because you're right. Mm. You know, if you're stuck in the middle of the middle of something, and somebody goes. Who's it happening to? Mm. You just want to fucking punch their lights. Yeah, out. you're so angry and you just don't want to. You mean who's it fucking happening to? Me, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you've when when you've got all that noise that's going on around whoever it is, all that noise, rather than going, Oh, who's that happening to? Perhaps look at the validity of the stuff that's coming up. 
Is it real? And you're not doing it because it's just coming up. Yeah. I was so involved. Yeah. But it's being able to get mm, enough yeah. distance from it to go, that's interesting. Look at that shit coming up. Mm. You know? And the more distance you get from it, the more you'll start smiling when you spot it. You just do. Oh, fuck, there that go. There goes that thought again. And you just smile at it. So After that, I could. So it loses its... Yeah, it yeah. starts to lose its sting. Mm. Well, one thing somehow ceased. Out of the blue, it just went to peace. Then I could... I start talking to him, explain to him exactly what happened. I said, I know I instigated. I know this is what I did. Like, I was aware of every step that took place but there and then I was like a volcano <laughs> just everything he said was just not in my favour <laughs> and then you know but as I said I'll, but after at the end I was like really proud of myself which I normally am not like that proud of that I actually did something that to mm. get out of it beautiful yeah beautiful <clears throat> now beautiful. I've got to do the other one <laughs> like I was telling you before it will just happen yeah it will yeah yeah it will so, just just observe yeah just try and try and sit in a space of observation yeah and see that it all just happens it's got fuck all to do with you mm. nothing to do with you when i realized that that anger after i thought it just came out of nowhere i, I wasn't in that mood at all mm. it just sprang up mm. you know and but it was a good lesson. <laughs> look, if you, if you look at that a little more closely, the reason all that sprung up is because there's an idea of you there mm. that's, that's deciding, mm. I don't fucking like that behaviour. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't like that behaviour. Mm. Yeah? And when that me is there, so when that sense of me is there, identifying with those thoughts, mm. saying, I don't like that behaviour, when that's there, guess what happens? It turns into a feeling in the body. And yeah. then you get like, Ugh, yeah, you, yeah. you twist, you contract. I did, I had this big uh, knot in my stomach. Yeah. And the reason for that contraction is the belief yeah. that there's a me there that's being affected by someone or yeah. something. Yeah. You know, and eventually you'll be able to go, okay, at least you'll get to a point where you can identify that there's a me there it's not. It's got nothing to do with the other person. Yeah, that's right. You're just being yeah. affected by a thought that's yes. floating through. Yeah. Then you want to attach it. Yeah. And that's your fault. Do you, you know what I mean? And he's not, he, he not giving me the right answers because he said, "That's it. We're not going there anymore." <laughs> and I turned around. I said, "You're not. I am. <laughs> I'm still going because I want to go through this. Yeah. I want to. I have to this, see this thing through." Yeah. <clears throat> so just watch. <clears throat> yeah. Just try and watch. Watch it. You're not doing it. Yeah. You're not doing it. It just happens. Yeah. So Terry, a couple of weeks ago, you were explaining something about uh, the seer from the head, that there's no head, there's space, mm. right? And this week I was on my own, I was watching uh, TV, and this guy came up, I can't remember his name actually, but I think his second name is Lang, anyway, and he was saying the same thing as, where he points, sorry? Yeah, yeah, where he points and then he says when you point to your head, you can't see the head. Because consciousness, everything appears only when consciousness looks at it. Mm. So because you can't see your own head, so for, the, for you there is no head. Mm. But there is the space which is looking. Mm. Is describe, that? Great. Try and describe that space. Well, we, the space is everything. Or something. From, from your own experience, yeah. If you've really well, it seems like it's coming from here. If you've if you've actually seen that, try and describe it. Well, I can't. <laughs> Beautiful. Then you've seen it. You've experienced it because you can't describe it. You absolutely can't describe it. So, if it's conscious looking through the space, why is it that it's I can only see, or he only sees what I can see, say, from here to there, you know? Like. Oh, that's easy. 
Um, that's because you don't have an eye here, an eye here, and an eye here, and an eye here. He's right. got a couple here. Yeah, so it's related, <laughs> so it's related to the physical. Yes. It's still just the same. Of course. Yeah, I can't see that way. That's right. You can't. But let me tell you, that's enough. <laughs> Fucking that's enough. That's enough. More than enough. It's awesome. So there is that space. There is that. So that space is looking. So even though we say there's no head, or they're called the headless body, right, but we're still looking through those seemingly eyes, which it seems that way. It seems. It, it way. seems that way, but it's actually awareness. Yes. Because awareness can see all directions. Yeah. Yeah, but it's awareness. No, it's not a, a, a looker or a looked at or even a looking. Kind of is the looking, but it's it's an awareness. It's just an awareness until you start identifying with the eyes and the looker and the seer and the seeing. If you don't do that, it's just awareness. Looking is already filtered. Like there is an awareness of being that is space. And now if you filter it through the biocomputer, you change that space like awareness into the seeing, our space of seeing, space of hearing. That is already filtered. See the singularity, the one space like awareness, the pure bliss of being now is channeled through one camera and it appears as object through the hearing device, it appears as sound. So it is already filtered through the body. So it's already inferior. I mean, this that's why we call it appearance. Singular existence doesn't need eyes and ears. The knowing of being and bliss, bliss of being is all there is. But to see itself, because this is all there is, there is nothing else. There is no awareness of itself. So awareness is unaware of itself. To be aware of itself, it dreams the other, it dreams the object, and it looks, gives itself the vehicle to experience the other, seeming other. So as the awareness, it doesn't need the body, it, but the, through the body, it can have a glimpse of itself. Through the body, it expresses as consciousness. And the body is limited, because only awareness is unlimited. That's why it has many bodies to look through many different nooks and corners of the appearance. It's only, it's only inferior if you think about it though, isn't it? It's what? It's only inferior if you think about it, and I think that's what Terry was saying about the it's all wow, that's enough. Is, uh, somebody beautifully said on Nemeless on Thursday, it's almost if you slow down enough that love catches up. Mm. So you just, down to a stop, you're not thinking about it, and then the wow just naturally comes through. Yeah, and the and tiny you, little things. Sorry, and what you said, um, <laughs> sorry, what Kat said, awareness <coughs> can't be aware of itself. Do you understand that? No. Okay, so that experience that you had of no head or nothingness, yeah. space, sorry, no. whatever you yeah. call it, and I said to you, describe it. <laughs> you can't. That's because that's what it is. So there's no awareness of that. There's no awareness of that. It is awareness. So there's no awareness of awareness, do you say? Correct. Yeah. It, it implies two. There's the split. That's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, I see all that. I'm still here. There's, just, there's still a split there. So yeah, I understand it all, but I still feel stuck. <coughs> we are. But I think yeah, that's what we're all. That's what we're all. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the. That's yeah. That's common. That is what it is. So you kind of get, you know. All all we can do is point. Have a look for yourself. You know, and the last time you were here, I said stuff, and you went away and you had a look. That's all you can do, yeah. is look for yourself. So we'll say to have a look at something or try and find something or whatever the case may be. 
then you go and do it. So I can't give you anything, you know. That's right. Totally can't give you anything. I understand. Yeah, I mean, just say, have a look for yourself and see what you find. But it helps when everyone, you know, says something. Sometimes something will trigger someone. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> About, about thought, they're saying, uh, you know, like everything's thought and the thought creates the emotion. Right? I had a dream the other night and uh, something happened, I was really upset in the dream. And then, after a while, I was really angry, I had knots in my stomach. All of a sudden, I got this other thought said, no, that was only a thought. Bang, and that changed everything. Because I realised that I was, I was getting upset, Was the thought was making me upset. Then it came up that it was only a thought. In other words, what are you upset about? Whether well, it's just a thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Yeah. That's it. Yes. Yeah. And all those in. Here's the trap, though. All those insights that we have, mm. catching a thought and all that stuff, mm. we still think it's me doing the catching mm. of it. Well, they did phrase that the thought came up looking for the getting version rather than the not getting it version. The you are getting it version. You did say the thought just came up, so that's yeah, a question of openness. But it was clear as a bell, like, mm. it's like someone was talking to me, you know, says, what the hell are you complaining about? What are you, what are you upset about? It's just a thought, you know, words, yeah. what are you learning, you know, you know, put it, mm -hmm. put it into practice. Yeah. So here's the thing, any of the insights that you're having along the way is not the me having the insights. They just aren't the thought. That's not to say that, <laughs> that's not to say. That's not, that's, not to, that's not to say that the insights aren't real or true, mm -hmm. but it's not the me mm -hmm. that's having the ins. It's not the me that's seeing that. It's not the me that's becoming aware of that. It's not the little phantom Tony. Well, there's no me, full mm -hmm. stop. It's awareness story. itself. Yeah. It's always mm -hmm. awareness. Which is what you are. Mm -hmm. There is no me full stop. That was beautiful. That's the <laughs> wow. that's yeah, because we over time and that's a good good note to finish the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> full stop. No me full stop. Full stop. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. See you. Can wave to the guys who are watching. Hope you get better. Love to